Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome to Manifested e-learning platform. I'm your teacher, Bonnie Kinyaga. In our previous lesson, we discussed endothermic and exothermic reactions. Why are we saying that an endothermic reaction is a reaction which involves gain of heat from the surrounding. And we give the example of dissolving ammonium nitrate in water. When you dissolve the ammonium nitrate in water, you expect that the temperature of water is going to, to be higher than the temperature of the resulting solution when you measure their temperatures using a thermometer. That is now what you use to illustrate an endothermic reaction. While an exothermic reaction, we say it's a reaction which involves loss of heat to the surrounding. And we did this by using sodium nitrate. We say that if you dissolve sodium nitrate in water, then you expect that the temperature of water is going to be lower than the temperature of the resulting solution showing that heat has been lost to the surrounding. So those are the endothermic and exothermic reactions as we discussed in the previous lessons, where we said again you should be able to define exothermic and endothermic reactions. So I hope you've done that. In our today's lesson, I want us to discuss the energy level diagrams. energy level diagrams. We are going to start with endothermic reactions first, then later we are going to discuss exothermic reactions. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to draw an energy level diagram to illustrate an endothermic reaction. So as we said, we see that an endothermic reaction is a reaction which involves gain of heat from the surrounding. So we are going to draw an energy level diagram, which is a diagram to show the relationship between the relative energies of the reactants and the products against the reaction. So an endothermic uh, energy level diagram will look like this. On the y-axis, we have the energy. This energy is measured in, in joules. So these joules, again, can also be converted into kilojoules by dividing the joules by 1,000. So that's the energy is on the y-axis. Then on the x-axis, you have the reaction, the reaction progress. The reaction is taking place, so that's why we have the reaction progress. So at the beginning of the experiment, we have the reactants alone. And you have said that in an endothermic reaction, then energy is gained from the surrounding. So when you gain something, then like when you gain energy, that en the amount of energy increases. So you expect that the reactants will be at a lower energy compared to the products. So if these are our reactants, these are the reactants, and these are the products. So this shows that this energy is taken in. So energy is taken in. 
So to explain this, so the reactants, so you know if you are moving from a certain point, like if this is a, if this is a zero, if you are starting from zero energy, then maybe having 10, having 20, having 30, 40, 50 like that. So this shows that the reactants at the beginning of the experiment were having 20, kilo, uh, 20 joules of energy. So these reactants, they have gained heat from the surrounding so that this reaction is able to take place. It has gained energy from the surrounding. So when it has gained energy from the surrounding, then the products are having a higher energy compared to these reactants. And that's why the products, they're having 50 joules of energy. Though this, was, this is just a demonstration, it's not drawn to, to scale. So the products are having a higher energy compared to the reactants, showing that energy has been gained in the course of the reaction. So energy is taken in, and that's why the products are having higher energy compared to uh, the reactants. So energy is uh, taken in. Then in the reaction progress, we are starting the reactants in the beginning of the experiment. There are no products in the beginning of the experiment. So that's why in the process of the, exper in the, pro in the, the, process of the experiment taking place, then products are realized. And that's why you have the reactants first, then the products coming later. So this is now what we demonstrated using ammonium nitrate. So if we were to show this, or if we were to draw our energy level diagram to show an endothermic reaction, then our energy level diagram will look like this. Energy level So energy level diagram for dissolving ammonium nitrate. For dissolving ammonium nitrate in, in water. So if you are drawing the energy level diagram, so expect that the energy level diagram will look like this. So this is a y-axis then you have the x-axis. So on the x-axis, we say that you have the reaction, the reaction progress. And on the y-axis, you have the energy, the energy which can be measured in, in joules. And the reaction progress, the reaction, this is the time you are taking to dissolve ammonium nitrate solid in water. Remember in our previous experiment, we said that you, you get two spatula fulls of ammonium nitrate, you put them in 100 ml distilled water in a beaker, and then you stir using a thermometer. Then from there, you are supposed to record the stable temperature reached and the stable temperature reached, you're just seeing it on, the, on your thermometer. So the reaction progress is just the time taken to dissolve uh, ammonium nitrate because it cannot just dissolve at once when you put it in water. So it is taking some time to dissolve. So the reaction progress can be in minutes or even in, in seconds. So at the beginning of this experiment, then the energy of the reactants energy of the reactant is lower. Then as you have talked about here, the, the energy of the reactant was around 20 joules. So again, here, the reactants will be at a lower energy. And the reactant in this case, not necessarily the reactant because you are dissolving ammonium nitrate in water. So it's just a dissolution process. So ammonium nitrate, A solid, then you dissolve it in water, water which is a liquid. So what you get after 
this experiment will be ammonium nitrate solution. So AQ means it is aqueous, it is a solution, ammonium nitrate solution. That's what you're getting after, uh, after dissolving ammonium nitrate in, in water. So the energy, the energy is higher. So let's say if this was zero, if you're doing a graph, so this one is not to scale, then you have 10, we have 20, of let's say 30, 40, then 50, then if these are our reactants, then these reactants are having a lower energy compared to, to the products. So the products, you have this kind of, so you can see that we are comparing the energy of the reactants, comparing with around 50 and 20, so you can see now 20, 50 is higher than 20, and the product, which is now the solution of ammonium nitrate, is having a higher energy compared to the reactants. That one is very important to understand that. So in an endothermic reaction always, that is gain of energy from the surrounding. And that's why we said in the experiment, we expected that when we measured the temperature of water, the temperature of water is supposed to be higher than the temperature of the solution, meaning that energy has been gained in the form of heat from the surrounding. And this energy which is now gained shows that the products will now have a higher energy compared to, compared to the, the products will have a higher energy compared to the reactants. So that is, that is our... That is our energy level diagram to show uh, dissolving ammonium or how ammonium nitrate dissolves in ammonium nitrate dissolves in water. So in our next lesson, we are going to discuss an exothermic reaction, an energy level diagram to show an exothermic reaction, just like we have done in in ammonium nitrate to show endothermic reaction in ammonium nitrate. But we'll leave you with one question. The question is define, define an endothermic reaction and draw an energy level diagram and draw an energy level diagram to explain it. So you are defining an endothermic reaction and drawing an energy level diagram to explain that that uh, endothermic reaction thank you